for the first talk this morning, I'm going to cover some basics. I'm not going to cover everything in excruciating detail. Um, there is a lot of, of stuff that is very, though very interesting, um, for instance, like the mating behavior of, the, of bed bugs. Um, I won't be covering that to any major um, extent, although I know you're just, you know, you're just, you're just tensing to ask, well, what about the sexual behavior of bed bugs? Um, no, we won't get into a lot of detail there, unless someone asks the question about it. But uh, let's talk about some basics. This is, this is uh, the bed bug. This is the human bed bug. Um, and you'll notice a couple of things ab about it. Uh, first of all, um, this, is an, this is a female, this is an adult. And the female and adults, uh, the adults have a very brownish, have a very brownish mahogany colored. Um, they have a very distinctive shape. If you take a look at that shape, this is, a, um, this is very distinctive, and they're also very flat. And if you take a look, this is one that's sitting on my knuckle right there, happily taking a meal. Um, and uh, and you can, so you get an idea of the size of it, and you can see just how, how flat it is around, if you look at the margin here, they're very, very flat. Um, and this is important to know what a bed bug looks like because there's a lot of other things that we'll talk about in a little while of, of what we typically find as people are suspecting as bed bugs when in fact they're not. Bed bugs are around a quarter inch in size, but when, and when they fed, when they've had a good blood meal feeding, they can, they'll actually elongate and, and distend a little bit and that, that can make that length a little bit longer up to about three eighths of an inch. And uh, before I um, continue here, I have some bed bugs. Live bed bugs. Merry Christmas. Um, don't worry, they are in plastic cases unless you crush the plastic case. said don't crush the plastic although if you do crush the plastic just let me know because we can handle them no problem at all um, but I wanted to not just only show you the, the uh, them on pictures but I also wanted to uh, sh let you take a close look at them and see what sort of different sizes and shapes there they are um, these uh, these bed bugs have actually been in those petri dishes since January uh, January 31st sealed in those containers and they are alive, so it gives you an idea of how long they can live when, if, uh, if, if needed. You'll also see various spotting on the fecal spotting on the uh, on the papers, and that's their that's their uh, fecal deposits. And uh, here's a I'll just refer to this picture right here. There's a number of uh, uh, things that you can keep uh, keep in mind when you're dealing with uh, when you're dealing with bed bugs. For example, here are here's an egg right here. Okay, there's a number of them around. And um, bed bugs start off life in an egg, they are, it's, which is laid by the female. Um, the, egg will, the egg will develop over about, oh, about a week or so, and then hatch out into a, uh, a, new, into a small instar adult, or a nymph, sorry, which is around right here. And um, those, uh, basically, the, the, the bed bug will go through five uh, nymphal stages or five juvenile stages. And the re reason it has to go through five stages is um, it has an exoskeleton or, or an outer shell. And unlike uh, you or I, who, as we grow, our skin stretches and its cells are replaced as, as we grow larger, um, bed bugs just like any other insect, will grow up into a certain level, which is basically bounded by their, their shell, and then they have to split it down the back and emerge, and then blow them, or inhale air, and blow themselves up even larger, and then, and then hold their breath while their skin, uh, or their shell, forms around them again and hardens, 
and then they can relax and then that's then that gives them the extra growing spot so they'll go through five of these stages where they where they will where they will feed um, they will they will develop then they get so too big for their shell so they'll split it open they'll inhale and they'll uh, they'll they'll get larger and they'll get larger and get larger until they hit the fifth stage and then after the fifth stage they become an adult and and the sexually reproductive form now there's some interesting things with this picture that I wanted to point out. Besides the uh, besides the eggs, besides the nymphs, and the uh, here's an adult right here. Um, I wanted to point out the fact that we have a lot of fecal spotting, like I've already mentioned, and and these um, these things are all indications of a bed bug infestation. Now there's some weaknesses in the bed bug lifestyle cycle that we can take advantage of, and one of them is shown right here: the fact that um, all stages of bed bugs, bed bug eggs, bed, bed bug feces occur within uh, areas. They all clump together. And when they all clump together after they've been feeding, they all poop together at some point in time during the day after they've been, after they fed. So everything starts to accumulate or uh, um, uh, uh, accumulate around a site of infestation. So while it's difficult to find just one or two bed bugs, it's, it's relatively easy to start looking very carefully, very closely at sites and finding this sort of um, massive um, uh, accumulation or aggregation of bed bugs. And that's something to keep in mind as, as, you, as you go forward. Um, this is unlike, say, uh, mosquitoes who that the uh, mosquitoes will um, will lay their eggs in one in one area. The larvae, the juveniles, will develop in stagnant pools of water, and then when they emerge as adults, they'll fly around and they'll go bother you else. You know, they'll go bother people elsewhere. So their so their site of breeding or their site of the where the larvae are are different from where the adults are going to be for the most part. So there's some advantage to us in that bed bugs tend to accumulate or clump in areas. And when they do, um, uh, when they do find a uh, resting spot of a host, namely a human being at the, in, this, in this case, um, they will feed. And they feed just like mosquitoes. They have, uh, they have mouth parts um, that, have, uh, that have sort of a needle-like um, needle -like form. And they will push their, they'll push their mouth parts in underneath the skin. And they look for blood, uh, blood vessels underneath the skin. Um, once they do that, they will inject um, sal saliva and some other uh, materials in underneath the skin that open up the blood vessels and that allows them to pump the blood from, from, the, uh, from the skin, um, just like a mosquito. Now, the effects of this can be seen in, um, um, many times, but in some cases, they can't be seen, and people have a hard time detecting um, that bed bugs are a, uh, um, that, they, that they're being fed upon. But when, they, but when people do um, react to bed bugs, they typically get something that, a, a range of symptoms, everything from um, a small red spot um, up to an itchy little wheel or, 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 or bump. Um, and in some cases, they can actually be, uh, they can actually form like a blister like uh, like um, uh, uh, structure and um, it's actually interesting that there was just recently um, an airplane that was uh, that was coming back from um, uh, that was uh, coming back from Africa and they actually had to quarantine it because they thought that two of the kids on board had monkeypox because because but the kids had been bitten by um, by bed bugs but in someone explaining on the plane to a friend who looked it up online um, they came up with this idea that well these kids might have monkeypox so they actually quarantined the plane until they figured it out and and uh, and that that caused quite a bit of problems so you can see sort of the variability that we're dealing with with these bites a couple of other things. Um, you often hear, particularly from the medical community, that um, if you see bites in a straight line, that's an indication of bed bugs. And while that can happen, that is not diagnostic of bed bugs. You cannot say, yes, it's a straight line, therefore it is bed bugs. Okay? Because um, 
we can have a number of other things uh, bite in straight lines. So you get some fleas that jump onto a sock and they happen to jump on in the right area or at the top of a, a slipper or something like that and they bite people. They, you can get bites in the line. Um, if you have shorts on and you have mosquitoes feeding, they might feed along the short line or hemline and, and you get bites in the line and that can be mistaken. Um, we also get issues with, uh, with uh, people thinking that, well, seeing straight lines anywhere, like, you know, this is a straight line here. Uh, I'm sure that this is a straight line here. And we can start connecting the dots and people swear that they have bed bugs because they're seeing straight lines all over the place. Unfortunately, um, you know, it might not be bed, bed bugs. In this case, it was because of the sheer number. Um, now, they're in, the, the biting in a straight line happens for a reason, and there's a couple of reasons for it. They can, they, can, they can feed in one spot, but not get a very productive blood vessel. So they pull out and they move along and then they feed again. They pull out and they move along and feed again. And that could cause the straight line. The other way that you might get a straight line is if you're lying on, on, a, uh, on a mattress, bed bugs don't necessarily have to crawl up on you to feed. They can actually, they can actually come along the surface of the mattress and feed at the mattress and, and in person interface so they just sort of plug in straight and you can get several bed bugs feeding along and that's how you sometimes get a line of, of bites um, but in saying that um, I've had a number of people say well I have bed bugs uh, well why do you have bed bugs well I have I have um, I have bites that are in a straight line um, indicating breakfast lunch and dinner or indicating appetizer main course dessert and that's just not that's just not happening um, so you just have to keep that in mind uh, going forward. Now the other complication to this, and, and one that um, I feel is causing some major issues with our response to bed bugs, is the fact that only 75% of people are reactive to bed bugs. That means 25% of people are not reactive to bed bugs. I do not react to bed bugs unless I take a jar of 200 insects, 200 bed bugs, and I put it up against my arm in one concentrated spot, then I get a rash. Um, so I, I do not react to put one or two on my arm, no problem at all, I don't get. However, I have a friend of mine who's a researcher who is highly allergic to, uh, to bed bug bites, and he gets this, even on one feeding, he gets this massive um, cellulitis forming with a ma major swelling and major darkening of the skin, and that lasts for a long time. But the problem is if you have only one in four people, um, or if you have only th uh, three quarters of the population react responding to bed bugs, then by chance you can have cases where people are not knowing that they're being bitten by bed bugs, not knowing that they've slept in a bed. For, for example, hotels, um, you know, you could by chance have three or four people in a, in a hotel room and not be bitten by bed bugs. And then that one person that comes in who's highly reactive to bed bugs suddenly gets bitten by a couple couple bed bugs and then you're wondering where the bed bugs uh, came from. Um, and this becomes an even greater challenge when you're over the age of 60 because the chance that people are going to detect bed bugs feeding on them by having raised belt, uh, bites and things like that um, drops to 50%. So basically one in two people for instance, you have an elderly elderly home, an old age home senior assist center, um, and basically one in two people are not reactive to bed bug bites in those in those types of places. And you think about you know you add the the idea of confusion about bed bugs in 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 uh, in places, people thinking that they're other insects, they're not reacting to bed bugs, and you can have a fairly large and raging infestation in areas within the um, within the uh, building, and 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 trying to trying to get a handle on it is it can be a real problem. And typically, a lot, of, a lot of times, particularly in the um, early 2000s, when hotels dealt with them, they were dealing with them on a sort of a complaint by complaint basis. But you add complaint by complaint basis to these numbers, and you realize that it, the infestation could be a lot larger, a lot more pronounced, a lot more spread through the area. And, uh, and, uh, and if you're just um, dealing with the complaints, you're just fighting fires, and you're not dealing with the source of the, uh, source of the problem. I think this is the source of me um, having difficulty with friends on Facebook. 
Um, this is the uh, Pioneer Press, and um, I was on the front page about a couple of years ago, and uh, my kids called me Dr. Yuck for a little while. Um, I had given a, uh, I'd given a, um, I'd given a full interview, and we had talked about bed bugs. We'd taken all sorts of pictures, uh, but instead of putting a bed bug in the middle front page center in on there, they ended up putting me on the front page, and then and then they put these little bed bugs around that uh, that I had provided a picture of. Um, I show this because it, it it illustrates the sort of the societal. Um, perception of bed bugs and and while this is this is going to be hard to reverse there's some very important ramifications to this type of societal perception of bed bugs uh, the first one and the most major one is um, people think that they're dirty people think that they're unkempt um, it, when they have bed bugs and they're less likely to seek help they're less likely to try and deal with the with the with the problem um, on a societal basis. We are a societal animal. We deal with a lot of problems within family groups, between family groups, within communities. And um, bed bugs are one insect that takes advantage of society and takes advantage of community. And if the people who are not uh, who are dealing with bed bugs are not trying to get that help from from um, with or, or, or Trying to deal with stress on a on a family basis, at the very least, then then there's a chance that the bed bugs will just sit there and fester and, and become greater and greater. I've had mothers who will not they have bed bugs in their home, and um, the mothers will not invite their kids over and tell their kids to stay away from their home because they the, they they fear that the mothers fear that the that they're going to pass bed bugs onto the kids. And in doing that, they create a lot of stress for themselves. Instead of talking about it, trying to figure out the preventive strategies, trying to get information about this. And, um, and this is a major issue. Because the more we can communicate, the more we can figure out where the problem is within any one building or any one business or, or any, any, uh, in the house, then the faster we can get rid of the issue and, and cut it back. So the, um, the, it just illustrates, and I'll go through a little bit more when, once, we, uh, once we get into the rest of this talk. Bed bugs get confused with many things, and, and this is where the problem comes in with trying to deal, when we're trying to address a bed bug issue. Um, I've had a number of things come across my desk, and I'm still at about 80% of things that, that come in for identification are not bed bugs, or not human bed bugs at the very least. Um, and there's a huge con um, confusion about what bed bugs exactly are. And usually our questions come up more when, when, the, uh, when media um, get involved with um, uh, bed bug uh, issues and, and broadcast this all over the place. So um, if you, uh, um, so identification is, is absolutely critical. And here are some of the things, there's just a short list of things that have appeared on my desk when people have thought that they had bed bugs. Um, beetles, spiders, web caught insects, fleas, mites, springtails, grasshoppers. I've had two grasshoppers, two different people wondering if they're bed bugs, and they were, they were underneath the bed in each case, but someone was digging around, happened to find these things, and all of a sudden freaked out that they might have bed bugs. Grasshoppers. Um, one person even said, are you sure? It's not a bed bug. And, and I had to say, no, the big legs and the fact that, you know, these big legs, the wings, not a bed bug. We do get bat bugs in, the, uh, in Minnesota. We do get swallow bugs. And um, just like human bed bugs, uh, these, are, these are in the family of bed bugs, although they cause problems to a lesser extent. Um, bat bugs, can anyone guess what bat bugs feed on? Bats. And swallow bugs? 
Swallows, fantastic. Okay, I'm glad you're awake. Um, yes, bat bugs. Uh, these, this, this group of insects in general um, are, are 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 adapted to feeding on communally nesting animals. So you get a bat colony in a uh, in a house in an attic, and you can get bat bugs in the attic. And, and a lot of um, ca a lot of cabins up north have bats in and around them, and we get bat bugs in, in cabins, we get bat bugs in, in, um, in um, resorts and that sort of thing. And, um, and they can be confused with bed bugs because they look a lot like bed bugs, except they're hairier. There's a, there's a lot more hair on them, and we can quickly identify them as such. But if you were to try and control a bed bug issue that is actually a bat bug issue, you're controlling in the wrong area and you're wasting a lot of money. Same with swallow bugs. Um, I've, I had a number of cases actually in the Stillwater area where we have um, swallows nesting on the sides of buildings and we get swallow bugs into the house. Now the interesting thing is that swallow bugs will actually feed readily on humans, but uh, bat bugs do not. And so swallow bugs can set up an infestation around a bed but more likely it's um, associated with the swallows. And uh, if you do not deal with the swallow nests, then you can, there's a chance that you're gonna continue having uh, um, swallow bugs. And then I get the mysterious other objects and, and mysterious bites, um, scab, skin flakes, nasal mucus, nose nuggets, flake paint, uh, fluff. Um, I've had people swear that they picked a bed bug out from their nose because they saw legs on that were, you know, waving around. No, that's not a bed bug. Um, and then we get uh, hives, rashes, fist disease. I've had a couple of kids come in to the office with their concerned parents, um, thinking that they had a problem with, um, with bed bugs because they saw it on the news the night before and suddenly their child breaks out in this massive rash on the trunk of their body. And, um, and usually what I end up doing, because I can't diagnose that problem, I usually just suggest that they go see the doctor, a uh, medical doctor, and, and ask them about fist disease because usually it's, it's, it's um, um, before the rash comes sort of flu-like symptoms and, and uh, a fever sometimes and, and coughing and that, and then that seems to stop and then two days later the kid breaks out in a rash on the trunk and then uh, parents freak out because they think it's bed bugs. Um, allergies, other insect bites are often confused with, uh, with bed bugs. And then aggressive self-grooming, and, and this stems back to the yuck. Uh, people think that they're, um, that they're uh, dirty if they've got bed bugs, so they feel if they clean, and particularly if they clean themselves, they'll get rid of um, the bed bugs, which they do not. So uh, people start using more aggressive tactics for cleaning themselves. They, you know, they, dr they get rid of the hand soap or the, or, the, or the bath soap, and they use dishwashing detergent uh, um, that they would use in dishwater. Or they, you know, we've had one case where they actually start using bleach full strength on themselves to, to try and clean themselves. And in that case, you know, you're stripping oils, you're causing dermatitis itself, and, you know, chemical dermatitis, and, and then, it, it gets worse, so people think that they have a, a, a bigger problem or worse problem. So uh, we, and, and this is one of the issues why, you know, if we have people who are just, you know, I have bed bugs, but I'm not a dirty person, we have to realize that it's not just cleaning the apartment, it's not just about cleaning themselves, because that's not really going to help as much as it is having a professional pest management um, company come in and do a job properly. Um, now there's some other behaviors that I wanted to just bring into, into mind and that this is to some extent why it's an advantage for us to go after them and, and to find them. Uh, you know, if you're, find, you're trying to find one or two in a room, it's very hard. But once they start building up in numbers, you can certainly find them and 70 to 90% will be close to resting surfaces within about six to eight feet. So that's where a lot of the initial investigation can, can occur if you're suspecting a bed bug infestation. And you can see here's a ex perfect example of where we have um, um, a, an aggregation of, uh, of sorts, uh, a lot of fecal material, um, a, a lot of bed bugs uh, in, in these areas. You can see there's a female here sitting on the edge of the uh, piping of the mattress. Now this is a fairly heavy infestation, but I think that the actual start or initiation of this infestation happened right here, and that was on the underside of the bed. And this is the box spring. This, this edge right here is the, is the corner 
corner where that sits in the rail um, supporting the bed on the bed frame. And we had a much, uh, str a much more, um, uh, uh, a much older part of the infestation, um, a lot more droppings, a lot more insects, that, and all of these clear things right here are actually shed skins uh, from bed bugs growing. So you can see that this is probably a, the, an area where they first started. So it's just not about looking on the edge of the tops of the mattress or the edge of the mattress. Um, if, you're, if you're serious about looking for a bed bug infestation, you gotta flip the box spring up and look around the edges and, under, on, and the underside of this uh, dust cover, which is called ticking. Uh, make sure you have a staple gun so that you can staple it back into place um, after you've torn it off to take a look at it. No, you can't do that in a hotel. Let me, let me draw that line right there. <laughs> No, with, with hotels, um, for, I, I usually, when I go to a hotel, I check the luggage valet, which is that sawhorse type thing that you, that you open up and put your luggage on. I check that, and then I check, I pull up the, um, the sheets around the bed um, and look around the edges. And I might not find every single bed bug. I know, I know um, I've got friends who will spend two hours looking in a room for bed bugs, um, but usually I'm looking for the bed bug infestation that might I might pick up and carry home with me. And by checking the four corners of the bed and the bed ruffle and stuff, that's the way I can tell that there's not, there might be one or two that are gonna feed on me, that's gonna happen. But, but the fact that we've, you know, I don't have a large infestation that I can carry home. Okay, now I say resting surfaces because bed bugs are not only just on beds. And people think that, well, I've got bed bugs, I gotta throw my bed out and that'll get rid of the bed bugs. No, they won't. Um, they will feed. They will. They will sit on a number of different resting surfaces anywhere where a, a human being is going to sit for a period of time, or an animal like a pet is going to sit for a period of time. And uh, here's a here's a perfect example. This is a, um, a sofa. Um, this is uh, the button on the middle of a sofa, and you can see the droppings around the in in this area. It illustrates one thing that the bed bugs do like to do, though. They like to sit up against things. If I were to put a bed bug right out in the open here and, uh, and have it sitting there, the first thing it's going to do is, is run towards some darkened areas, some cracks or crevices or something like that. They're not going to want to sit out just in the open on the middle of that table. They like to be up against things. They like to be under things. Uh, and it's just innate. Um, and then if you add the fact that it's resting surfaces, you can see, you can think about the, the variability. And then if you have a bigger infestation, they will move to other places where they can hide. And they spend 90% of their time hiding. Uh, so instead of calling them bed bugs, you could just as well call them sofa bugs. You can call them pet bed bugs. If the infestation is larger, you can call them sprinkler bugs or thermostat bugs or picture bugs or carpet bugs. Um, not carpet beetles though, okay? Carpet bugs. Um, they like to be in areas where they can hide. And the smaller the infestation, the more likely they're going to be cornered around places where people rest. So as a home visitor or public health nurse, one place you wanna avoid sitting is definitely the bed uh, if you're visiting a place. And the other place to avoid are couches or, or sofas. Okay. Try and sit in the in the kitchen on a hard chair. If there's no if there's no hardened chairs around, bring your own stool or something. And we'll talk about that later on this afternoon. People will often say, "Well, they like wood. They don't like metal." And um, they will they will say, "Well, if you have a wooden bed frame, get rid of it and get a metal bed bed, bed frame." Well, that's not going to work. Um, some people say that. Having a metal bed frame, it feels colder, so they prefer not to be on the metal at that point, and that's not necessarily true. Um, you gotta think that these bugs are moving around, they're at room temperature. This, uh, this bed frame is at room temperature. Same with the wood frame that might be sitting on that bed frame is at room temperature. Okay. The fact that it feels colder is the fact that because we are warmer than room temperature and when we touch something that is metal, it just feels colder because the heat's wicking away from our hand. Okay. So they will infest metal. Now, the one thing that's of disadvantage to them is they tend to walk around on their claws. Their, their claws 
uh, rather than having sort of a fleshy pad like a fly or a cockroach when they put it on when they put it on a surface that allows the fly to stick on walls or on glass um, surfaces. Um, bed bugs don't have those pads; they they have these claws and they walk around on their claws, which is excellent for fabrics and wood and rough surfaces. It gets a little bit more difficult with smooth surfaces. So that's sometimes why we don't see them on on metal as much because it depends on how much purchase or how much grip they can get on the metal surfaces. Here's a picture of, of tearing the ticking away from a um, uh, while doing an inspection for bed bugs, and you can see the brown, brownish areas right here. This is all bed bug um, uh, material right here, where uh, where the bed bugs have basically been crawling up onto the chair, or this chair has been beside the bed, and they've been transitioning to the bed and then back to the chair. Curtain bugs. This is a curtain, a uh, no, severe infestation across the room from the bed. Now they will move away from the bed for, there's a number of reasons why, but um, in some cases it, there's, uh, there's a number issue with the bed bugs. Some cases there's, uh, there's an alarm pheromone that causes them to scatter, and then mating behavior uh, will also cause some, particularly the females, to move off and they will find different areas. So sometimes in heavy infestations, when you're, the complexity of what you have to treat, particularly if it's a, in curtains, uh, how are you going to do that? Can you launder these curtains? Can you heat these curtains? Can you, know, can you spray the curtains? You know, all of these questions come to, come to bear. And, uh, and when you deal with an infestation that's sort of moved into other areas, these are sort of the challenges that we have to deal with. And that's why it's so costly of doing an, uh, um, a control because you have to look at them. There has to be labor to find all these sites. This is a baseboard on the other side of on the um, on the, the the bedrooms on the other side of this wall, and the and the bed bugs were crawling out from underneath the wall and, and infesting the the area behind this carpeted baseboard. In some cases, you have to pull the baseboard the carpeted baseboard off, or at least be able to treat in behind it some some way. Um, but once the infestation starts to move and starts to spread, then they will. That's when they go into the next um, to the next rooms, and um, you know they will start to spread into different areas. If it and you can see you know places where they'll hide. You can almost see where the where the uh, where the picture had once sat um, on this wall. They are attracted to heat sources, so sometimes you have um, uh, areas where they're giving off heat and they've clustered around. Um, this is sometimes confused with cockroaches as well, because cockroaches will do the same thing. And the droppings are a little bit similar, depends on what the cockroaches are eating. Um, and then it's not necessarily carpeted surfaces that get infested, uh, but you can also have, if it's a hidden area, you can also have um, cracks and crevices around parquet flooring infested as well. And in severe infestations, they will get up onto the ceiling. And this becomes an even further challenge because if this is a uh, plaster or, or popcorn type of ceiling, how are we going to control up there? And um, there's some key uh, ways to do that, uh, but uh, once it's reached this type of thing, there's gonna be a lot of time to try and clean up the infestation. Now that's on the home, uh, that's around a home, around a residence, then they can move beyond the home. And hitchhiking is a, a thing that bed bugs do very well. Uh, and we've had some uh, we've had some recent research. Uh, uh, Corey McQueen, my PhD students here, if you want to, um, you can come talk to him about some of his work looking at um, the possibility of bed bugs detecting dirty laundry and being able to associate with dirty laundry to the point where they can be carried around and, and moved around to different areas. Um, but this is a an important part to the infestations. When we have an infestation that goes unreported or that or that's not handled properly, that's when bed bugs can move into other areas. That's when you start hearing about them on the city buses. That's when you start hearing about them in retail facilities, um, and when you hear them about them in movie theaters. Uh, it's because they've been carried there by uh, uh, by infesting something. And this bed, this backpack in particular, is a is a good example of how well they can move with uh, with uh, personal belongings. This backpack has over 300 bed bugs on it, and you can see along this edge, um, you know, the adults' eggs, 
juveniles, um, all stages are on this backpack. And this backpack, just to give you an idea, was carried by someone who I figure is probably the Johnny Appleseed of the bed bug world in the city of Toronto. Because this person was uh, deal, uh, had picked up bed bugs somewhere and was receiving outpatient treatment at a senior's home, um, staying there every once in a while, bringing this backpack in, dropping it on the floor, the bed bugs would move off and, and find other places to be. Then he would pick up the backpack and he would go to onto the bus, he'd go to movie theaters, he'd go to hostels, and basically just seeded bed bugs everywhere he moved. Um, and I didn't initially realize that this was uh, an, uh, a how major an issue it was until um, we had this, uh, uh, we had taken this backpack to one of the offices and we tried to do a carbon dioxide fumigation of it, put the backpack into a carbon dioxide chamber and crank up the carbon dioxide to try and kill the bed bugs. Long story short, it didn't work. Uh, even two hours exposure of carbon dioxide did not work. Um, and so we were left with this backpack that was still heavily infested. So we put it into a bag and we put it out behind the office because the office people People didn't want to have anything to do with an infested backpack in the office. So we put it out back, um, meaning to take it back to the uh, gentleman um, and, and treat it another way. And someone walked by and stole it. So, you know, it's a cruel form of justice, I think. But, but it really illustrated to me how serious uh, these bed bugs are about hitchhiking. And I think in some of the initial infestations that we had early on in the season, early on in, in, this, um, um, in this decade, where we were trying to figure out how they were moving so uh, effectively, one of the things that we had happened in a number of places where I, where I did some work was uh, hotels would save costs by getting rid of their mattresses. They would put them out back to be disposed of and they would just replace the mattresses because the cost in trying to control them on the mattresses at that time was just insurmountable. So they would put the mattresses out back and within half an hour, people had come by and picked up all these mattresses thinking they had scored an excellent mattress and brought them to their home. So I think we had, at some point in time, at least in the um, uh, province of Ontario, we had a massive infusion of bed bugs into uh, low income areas or in areas where people cannot afford beds or willing to go for a, a nice hotel bed. Um, and, and that was one of the ways, reasons why they're having such a problem now, I believe. So there's some key steps to control, and I'll talk some more about um, multifamily housing after the after lunch. Um, but I wanted to uh, get some of the other speakers up to talk about a variety of other um, issues and, and how to control them. Um, but the key steps to control um, after giving you sort of the basics is, you know, we really have to identify the problem. We really have to know that, um, what the uh, what the um, uh, what the issue is. Is it bed bugs? Okay, is it mystery bites of something that's not bed bugs? Is it, are they, are they uh, mosquitoes or fleas? Um, was it a carpet beetle? And we find a lot of people are, are finding carpet beetles around their homes right now. Um, and so is it a carpet beetle? Is it a box elder bug? Because we sometimes get people coming in and, and claiming that they've got bed bugs when in fact it's a box elder bug that found its way in. And, um, and then once we've identified the problem, you can see in how they spread to different areas that the control tactics have to be thorough. We just can't sort of do a quick treatment around a bed and expect to get decent control of bed bugs. It might work because they might have had a small infestation, but more often than not, um, the infestation will come back and, and we have to figure out how to, uh, how to, um, uh, how to adequately control them. And then as well, how do we prevent them? Uh, because uh, prevention, if we can stop them from getting into areas, if we can reduce their incidence in areas, then we can have money allocated to properly controlling them when they do occur, rather than sort of this out of control situation that ha is happening in many, uh, in many homes and many apartments. And then, um, you know, there's some additional steps, particularly in areas like schools, where, where you know, they don't necessarily set up infestations unless you have daycares or kindergarten uh, classes that are taking full day uh, sessions that are taking naps in the afternoon, um, but they might show up in an area. And, and how can we reduce that or how can we prevent that? Um, so by giving you some of the basics in biology, basics in, in behavior, you can start to see areas where you can cut uh, 
uh, cut down on their incidents, and if they do occur, how to best control them.